Next, we can see how writing directives can be simplified using WebStorm as well. If we go back to our app.js, let's go back down to the bottom. We type ngdl and hit tab. It'll create the directive for us. And I'll go ahead and put module above that. We could string these all together as well, but I find this syntax of calling module over and over again just to be a little bit more informative. This is gonna allow us to go ahead and create a new directive. I'll start this with a directive wm as a prefix for Wilder Minds, and then I'll just call this the status bar. Now I'm using a camel case syntax here, which is perfectly fine for a directive. And then when I return the elements here, I'll just say element.text. This is the status bar. Not a brilliant directive, but it should create a directive for us as we might expect. So let's go over to the order page so we can use this. And I'll just put this at the end of our form and I'll say div, and then I'll want to use this new directive. So I'll start it with wm, which is that prefix. And notice we're getting IntelliSense for this new directive. Now this new directive has been converted from the camel case that we created to the dash case, which is more common for directive names. So we simply leave this directive here. We'll go ahead and see when we show this in the browser. So we can now see this fairly dumb representation of our directive, but it is actually working. It is actually spitting this out and calling that directive code for us. So the next thing I want to show you is if you have certain things around a directive, like restrictions, WebStorm can help you assert those restrictions. So if we change this, and instead of returning that link function, if we go ahead and return the actual link, we can add the restrict here that will go ahead and restrict it to only an element name, not just an attribute name like what we used in the example so far. By making this change, if we go over to order.temple, we'll actually see that it's become highlighted with an error. It'll say the attribute is not allowed here. It's now validating that it's no longer going to support being used like an attribute. So if we change this to the element style, that error goes away. And in fact, if we get rid of this and just start typing, we're going to get that IntelliSense on the element level as well. That's because it's reading the restriction and applying it here in the code completion. Let's go back to that controller one more time. What happens if we go ahead and rename this directive here? Will it remember to rename it everywhere? Well, let's try. Let's go to refactor rename. Let's call it WM Pizza Bar instead. Refactor. And it found a number of uses of this WM status bar. We can just tell it to go ahead and do the refactor once we've reviewed these. And here it's called the pizza bar. And if we go back to the page, we'll see that it not only refactored it with the new name, refactored it with the right casing. And in this case, dash casing, because that is the right casing in this particular use. We can also, in the case of directives, add JS doc elements and have them be used. So here we're going to use the JS doc to say that this is a directive and G doc is helping it know the type of thing that we're documenting. Here is the name of the object pizza bar, which we of course renamed it to, and then a short description. We have this JS doc in here, just like most of the other elements inside of WebStorm. We can hit control Q on top of the object and it'll actually show that documentation based on the JS doc that is in the files, even if you aren't generating JS doc. It's going to be very, very helpful. So we've seen that for directives, WebStorm can certainly help us validate the directives as well as get code completion for our own directives, not just the built-in directives.